recognize, we're going to jump in and out of reality a little bit. Recognize that you're, that you're at various levels, right? But re-stress the need to learn the fundamentals, right? The need to go back to the beginning and have a foundational understanding of fundamentals. I am actually doing this. Does that make sense? And I, I, I made a very strong commitment saying, I'm not going to create this environment and then lose out on the opportunity for my coach to te teach you and me still get old and fat and not get better. You need to put yourself in a mindset to be coachable, to be teachable, to get the most out of this. You guys that came in the gym and you guys want to be world champions, right? And this is your goal and we're going to start with the fundamentals. I do not like the way it is. I do not like the way that people take advantage of the opportunities that you guys have. I've been all around the world. Some of you guys see my experience or not. Let me tell you something. There, you guys don't understand how good you have it until you have it. Uh, you guys have all been individually selected to me. Because I said, it ain't just because you're good looking, I promise you. It's because you're, there's something deeper in you that you say you want. But you'll never be able to tap into it with the wrong environment. So you guys need to become the change agent to that environment. All right, come in through the middle of the ropes. No, one at a time, Brian. Very seldom. Do we use the words always and never in boxing? Those are really big words, super big words. Any coach that comes up and says, you always have to do it this way and you never can do it any other way, be mindful that that's a warning sign to you. I want the weight on the balls of your feet with your heels just slightly touching the ground, equally distributed between your front and back foot. I don't want your weight on your front foot and I don't want your weight on your back foot. The weight moving straight up and down on the balls of your feet with your heels just slightly touching the ground. You see how my hand hangs down like this? You see this? Shoulder over top, my knee over top, my foot. I'm not doing this. My shoulders are parallel, I'm bending at the waist. Chin down. Now when I say stay bladed up, I mean this. You wanna stay as stealthy to your opponent as possible. I don't wanna stand in front of my opponent like this. I don't want to take my feet, even if my feet are right, and turn my shoulders like this. I want to keep as bladed as I possibly can, right? I want to create a narrow target. There are nuances to every single skill, every single technique, every single thing that we're going to do. And a lot of good coaches bring a slightly different context and a slightly different angle to it, and a slightly different view, and there's nothing wrong with that. Beware of the coach that tells you there's only one way, because there isn't. There's many ways to do these things. This is our way. This is what we're teaching. This is the way we do it in this gym. So why is this space that I'm talking about important? Because you can use that in a fight and I'll teach you how to use this space in a fight. Now you take your fingers off your tempo and form a nice loose fist. We teach a classic stance, a classic position. That's what we teach. Over time, as you get into this, you're, you're going to have a feeling for the way your body sets up and what's comfortable. This may be uncomfortable. It's how you're going to do it now. Put your hand here by your chin, like just out in front of your chin, this hand here like this, okay? All right, that's good, that's good. You all look like a bunch of fighters, except for you, Justin, you don't. Anyway, just kidding you. All right, so now here are the rules that I want you to follow. The foot that's closest to the direction you're moving is the foot that moves first. The second step is always equal in size to the first. Everybody watch me with your hands up in the position. The foot that's closest to the direction you want to go is the foot that moves first. If I want to move forward, that foot's closer. Second step is equal in size to the first. If I want to go back, that foot's closer. Second step is always equal in size to the first. If I want to go right, don't ever be told you never can do this or you could always have to do that. Always and never are really big words, okay? So these are what we prefer. This is what we expect you to do. This is how we do it in this gym. But for the sake of this, remember that there's no absolutes. There's not much artistry in this portion of the learning process. We're not teaching you to be artists right now. Right now, we're teaching you how to paint by numbers. So when I was a kid, you used to get these things and they would be like these famous portraits you'd see in the museums and they would outline them and they'd have a number that corresponds with a color and say one was red and two was blue and three was green and four was brown and five was black. And all you do is look for number one, oh, that's red. And you fill in all the ones with red and you did number two. And at the end, you had this beautiful painting, right? Look kind of like the artist painting, right? But you're no artist. 
right? You're not an artist or anything, right? But you learn to paint by numbers and you're learning how to do the strokes and you're learning about colors and you're learning about the easel and the fundamentals and how it works, right? You're learning to become something. Now, when you stand and you make your step, we don't want you to step like this, okay? We're teaching step, 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 right? And when you do it, you should be silent. All right, ready? Step back. Try and be silent. Step forward. You're too blocky. Get your foot over. Get your foot over. You're good. No. Put your foot on the line. Yeah. You end up, you went like you went from here to here. You opened your shoulders up, okay? I know you got a big right hand, right? When you stand like that, you're too squared up. Okay, step back. See if we can be absolutely silent. Step forward. When I tell you to be quiet like that, that puts you in touch with your feet. When I tell you to step, step, you just step. But when I tell you to be quiet, I'm putting you in touch with your feet, right? Feet before fists. Everything rises from the floor in fighting. Everything starts in your feet. Step left. Step right. Step left. Okay, now that you've moved a little bit, have you noticed that your hands are moving a little bit? Okay, how do you tell yourself that you're in the right stance? Okay, what should appear between your hands? Not over your hands, what should appear between your hands? Your opponent, right? Your opponent should appear between your hands. Okay, not over your hands, right? Not through your hands, but right? Right between your hands, if, you, if I'm fighting Q here, I want my opponent right between my hands. Just like that. You're learning to become something. Inside that context, you all have a certain level of artistry in you that will teach you later, that will allow you to come out later, that you can express later, right? Like playing music. You learn the chords first, and then you make music later, right? That's how it is in boxing. We're gonna teach you the chords. We're gonna teach you the fundamentals. The way that we do it here, then as you develop, we're gonna allow your artistry to come out, your personality to come out, your athleticism, your physicality, all those things that go into making up who you're going to be as a fighter. But for now, it's paint by numbers.